Hey there, science fans! Welcome to another exciting adventure where we blend fun and learning. Have you ever looked up at a kite dancing in the wind and wondered, how does it stay up there so effortlessly? It's not magic, although it seems like it. There's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Kites soar through the air thanks to some awesome science. It's all about forces working together in harmony. When you see a kite flying high, it's because of the interplay of several forces. These forces are what keep the kite aloft and stable. Forces push or pull on things, and with kites there are four main forces at play lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Lift is the force that pushes the kite upwards, counteracting the weight, which is the force of gravity pulling it down. Thrust is the force that propels the kite forward, usually provided by the wind, while drag is the resistance that slows it down. Let's unravel these forces and discover the secrets of kite flying. But before we begin, let's remember that science is all about exploration and having fun. So, grab your lab coats, or maybe just a hat, and let's embark on this exciting journey together. We'll dive deep into the fascinating physics behind kite flying. Get ready to have your minds blown as we explore the intricate dance of forces that make kite flying possible. This is going to be an adventure you won't forget. Let's talk about lift. Lift is a fascinating force that plays a crucial role in many aspects of our lives from the simple joy of flying a kite to the complex mechanics of aviation. Lift is what makes a kite go up. It's the invisible hand that allows the kite to defy gravity and soar into the sky. When wind blows over the kite's surface it creates an upward force that pushes the kite into the air. This force is generated by the difference in air pressure on the top and bottom surfaces of the kite. Think of it like this. Imagine yourself holding your hand out of a car window. The sensation you feel is a small-scale demonstration of lift in action. When your hand is flat, the air flows smoothly over and under it. This smooth flow doesn't create much lift, but it does give you a sense of the air's movement. But if you tilt your hand upward, the air pushes harder on the bottom of your hand, lifting it up. This is because the tilted angle changes the way air flows around your hand, increasing the pressure underneath. The shape and angle of the kite are super important for generating lift. Different designs and angles can significantly affect how well a kite flies. The kite acts like a wing, and just like an airplane wing, its curved shape helps to create more lift. The curvature allows the air to move faster over the top surface, reducing pressure and increasing lift. The steeper the angle of the kite, the more lift it generates. Pretty cool, right? This principle is not only essential for kites but also for understanding how airplanes, birds, and even some sports equipment work. Lift is truly a remarkable force that makes flight possible and adds a touch of magic to our everyday experiences. Now while Lift is trying to pull the kite upwards, there's another force acting against it, weight. Weight is the force of gravity pulling the kite down towards the ground. Everything has weight, from a tiny ant to a giant elephant, and yes, even our high-flying kites. The heavier the kite, the stronger the force of gravity pulling it down. That's why lighter kites fly easier. Remember, for a kite to fly, the force of lift must be greater than the force of weight. Otherwise, gravity wins and the kite takes a nosedive. Section 4 The Push and Pull of Flight Thrust and Drag We've talked about lift and weight but there are two more forces we need to investigate. Thrust and Drag Thrust is the force that moves the kite forward. When you run with a kite, you're creating thrust. The wind also provides thrust, pushing the kite along in the air. Drag is kind of like air resistance and it works in the opposite direction of thrust. It tries to slow the kite down. The shape of the kite affects drag. A kite with a larger surface area will experience more drag. Section 5. Finding Balance. The Key to Soaring High. Now that we know about lift, weight, thrust and drag, you might be wondering how they all work together to keep a kite flying. The answer is balance. For a kite to fly smoothly, all four forces must be in equilibrium. Think of it like a seesaw. If two people of equal weight sit on opposite ends, the seesaw stays balanced. But if one person is much heavier, the seesaw tips. It's the same with a kite. If one force is much stronger or weaker than the others, the kite won't fly properly. Section 6. Mastering the Angle A Kite's Secret Weapon There's one more important factor in kite flying, the angle of attack. This angle determines how the wind interacts with the kite's surface. Changing the angle of attack can make the kite fly higher or lower. By adjusting this angle you can control the kite's altitude and stability. If you tilt the kite up too much it might stall because the wind can't flow smoothly over its surface. This is similar to how an airplane wing can stall if the angle is too steep. But if the angle is too shallow, the kite won't generate enough lift. 
It will struggle to stay airborne and might even crash. The key is to find the sweet spot. This optimal angle allows the kite to harness the wind's power efficiently, keeping it soaring high and steady. So there you have it, science fans. Understanding the angle of attack is crucial for mastering kite flying. You've learned about the amazing physics of kite flying. From the lift and drag to the angle of attack, each element plays a vital role. Now go out there, experiment, and see these forces in action. Try different angles and see how your kite responds. And remember, when it comes to science, the sky's the limit. Keep exploring and discovering the wonders of the world around you.